reaction uh, about this tournament and what are your thoughts about playing? I think the opportunity to play you know, far out ways and negatives, obviously it's not the tournament I prefer to be playing in, uh, but uh, given our choices, we're, we're happy to continue to uh, move forward and practice and, and you know, have another game to play for our young guys uh, and also extend the careers of our seniors as long as we possibly can. Do you think maybe that will help because you do have such impact seniors that that will help motivate uh, maybe some of your young know, guys who may be disappointed not to be playing in a different tournament? Well, you know, I hope so. I hope the fact that the, you know, the seniors don't want this to be their last game at the Quest Center and motivate them to, to play as hard as they can play. Uh, but we're starting uh, four non-seniors, so the, the opportunity for them to, to play another game, to prepare for somebody that we haven't seen before, uh, it can do nothing but help you. And, you know, the reality of it is there's about 180 Division One teams that are impacted in and, and close the season down for the year, and we're one of the few that gets to continue to play. Talk about this team you think about all the way over. I don't know a lot about them because uh, I found out about 10 o'clock last night who we were playing. Uh, I, I do know their guards are very talented. Uh, uh, Adrian Oliver is averaging 25 points a game with the leading score in the country, and, and their guard court uh, combined is averaging 50 points a game. Uh, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to test us defensively, trying to keep their guards in front of us and to fill the three-point line because it's, it's obvious that their guards are playing at a very high level right now. Uh, Kenny was over here. Uh, he had a pretty good training just talk about uh, what role he might play. I mean, it seems like he's playing better. Well, he was he played great at St. Louis. And he's carried that good play over onto the practice floor since we returned. Uh, and he's not a senior that wants to see his career come in. And he's practiced with a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of effort. Uh, and I would expect that uh, he'll have a big game for us tomorrow night. Coach, uh, you know, I know you have bigger fish to fry, but UNO going to be one. Another, another big time basketball uh, team in the city. Is it good for basketball in the city of Omaha and the state of Nebraska to have another D1 sport in town? You know, I haven't really, uh, I haven't really thought about it. You know, because I've, I've got plenty on my own plate to, to worry about what somebody else is doing. But uh, obviously, there are some challenges at any time you uh, transition from Division Two to Division One. Uh, it, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's quite a chore. Uh, having friends that have done it at uh, the South Dakota schools and the North Dakota schools. It's uh, maybe not as easy as you think sometimes. So, uh, you know, they've got a long road ahead, but uh, hopefully it all works out for them in the end. They have played, they have played one of the times. Would you like to schedule a series with them for the future? Uh, I mean, that's something we'll discuss at a later date. You know, we're always going to try to put together a schedule that's, uh, that puts us in position. But if we do well enough, that you can get in the NCAA tournament. And I think they're probably are some teams across the country uh, that would like to go back and you know, reschedule a couple of their games because they, they got left out of the NCAA tournament because of their non conference schedule. So, uh, you know, that, that that's a bridge we'll cross when the time comes. Was that a lesson learned watching the selection show yesterday? Maybe, uh, you know, uh, reinforces some of your ideals about non conference scheduling? Yeah, you know, and it, for mid majors in particular, it's easier said than done. Sure. Uh, you know, we can't call a top 100 school and say, you can play us home. home. Oftentimes that's very difficult to do. So, so sometimes the schedule becomes the luck of the draw. Uh, who do you play? What type of year do they end up having that particular year? And then when you have an opportunity to play uh, a team like BYU, you have to find a way to beat them, and uh, especially when you got them on your own court. So uh, we'll continue to be aggressive on our non-conference schedule as we, as we possibly can. You guys have the number three score in the country of the year. You did a pretty hard good job against the number one score in the country already. Is that what you're telling your kids kind of them for what you're about to see tomorrow. Well, they haven't seen him yet, so uh, they're going to see him here this afternoon on the film. He's very talented, much like Andrew Warren from Bradley. I mean, that's, uh, uh, his game parallels Warren's in a lot of ways. He can shoot a three-point shot. He's good off the dribble. He's got that size at 6'4", 6'5", where he can score over the top of the uh, He's got seven games over 30 points this year. There's not many guys in the country that have done that. Did you get everything you needed to get out of the last three, four, five days? You know, I think so. You know, we, we had some fun with it, uh, playing some of the younger guys against some of the older guys. And uh, it was competitive. There was a lot of trash talking going on. So it, it was able to keep it fresh and lively in practice while we still tried to uh, move forward a little bit from the fundamental standpoint as a team standpoint. Uh, it's a long break between games. Uh, you know, it's you know, 13 days or whatever it is, 12 days between games. And that's, uh, uh, that's a long time to be off. Uh, but uh, yesterday, uh, I thought we were really good and really sharp. And uh, hopefully we can back that up with a good one today.
did you do basically the same kind of thing when you were at North Carolina and had a long break and you were playing and you didn't see the tournament thing? Yeah, we took it. Well, I mean, when you're when you're prepared for an NCAA tournament, it's easier to get the guys' attention. Uh, so I don't think you have to be as creative to keep your practices fresh and alive um, when an NCAA tournament bids around the corner. Uh, this is my first experience with it tournament other than the NCAA tournament, so we just try to be creative in our approach, uh, try to keep it fresh for the guys and interesting, and, uh, and at the same time, we we'll got it better. In your, in your discussions with the CBI, did they give you any kind of indication to win the tournament night and play at home the next round, or is that... Well, that's, that's, that's our hope, and that's our expectation, but, uh, you know, things change, so uh, we're happy to be home for the first one, and, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we out here to support our guys tomorrow night. It's good for our seniors uh, you know, to get a couple extra games and also for our younger guys to get a little bit more experience. So, I mean, but at the end of the day, it's basketball. Anytime you get a chance to play, you know, it's, it's a blessing in itself. So, I mean, we're all happy for the opportunity to come out here and play another game. Is it motivation factor for some of these guys? Uh, yeah, we haven't really talked about it, but I'm sure a lot of guys are motivated, you know, not only because you know, we didn't make it to where we wanted to go, but, you know, uh, as far as getting better for next year. So I think, you know, that definitely plays, plays into it. Did you guys get what you Talk needed about. out of practice the last four days? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of guys got to work on the offense, you know, maybe some of the red shirts that, that didn't play this year. Uh, the guys that sit now, and then you know they got to go up against the seniors, and so you know it was, it was kind of fun. You know we enjoyed it, but we also worked hard and got a lot done. You had a pretty good tournament on St. Louis. Just talk about this end of the year for you. You're kind of playing for it. It seems like harder every time. Yeah, I mean I just uh, towards the end of the year, you know, I, just, I just really wanted to get to the tournament, and so that was you know, I was really motivated. You know, but I, I thought you know even. When I wasn't playing well, I still had the same mentality, same focus, but you know, just you know, things happen to turn my way towards the end of the season. Hey, Tom, um, obviously, this is not the tournament you want to play in order to establish, but uh, how much of a blessing is it to have another chance and to improve and to maybe build on the Right. Oh, it's an opportunity. Just uh, get something started off this game, off this tournament. Uh, a lot of teams aren't even playing anymore. You know, they're done. Uh, it's good for our seniors to get some more time to play together, and uh, our young guys to get some more experience in building what we have. Is any tournament a good experience? In terms of I, th I think it is, especially in the postseason. Now, you know, it's so hard to play uh, further on into March, just because you know a lot of teams get knocked out quick. Uh, and you're not, there's no guarantee now you're going to get in the tournament. You know, there's, as you see, there's a lot of the teams that should have got in that, that probably didn't uh, last night. So uh, opportunity to play in March is great, and just got to build on it. What's the biggest thing you guys learned from being in the CIT last year? Um, I think, tournament, of course. I think it, uh, you just got to learn that you can build off certain things. Uh, you got to take things uh, as the positive side. Uh, obviously, it's not where you want to be, but you got you to gotta take it on the flip side and, and take it as an opportunity to get better. I asked Kenny this. He has uh, had that game last year. Is, is it motivating for you guys to you know that you can start that streak again? Uh, obviously it is. Um, I think the most part is. I mean, it's another opportunity to play with some of my seniors and to play with some of my teammates and just have fun and uh, go out swinging and build for something next year. He has, he has did a really good job against Jim. Uh, you guys got Jimmer Jr. coming in here. Right. Yeah. I mean, does that give you confidence so you can stop their guard? Um, obviously, it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be a competitive game. Obviously, you like playing against uh, other top competition. Um, obviously, we did a good job seeing Jimmer go for 52 the other night. But uh, obviously, it's going to be a fun and uh, ready to accept the challenge. Uh, you've been around. Obviously, you grew up in the area. You and all adding basketball as a division one. But what was your reaction when you moved those in that um, It's surprising. Uh, I think it's I think it's exciting actually. You know, you know the team. Hopefully it'll bring a little bit more crowds. Uh, obviously, I've had a lot of friends that go to UNO that play basketball at UNO, so I'm kind of excited. But you know, kind of don't know their situation, how that's going to work out for the next couple of years. But uh, really excited. I think it's going to be uh, tremendous for Omaha and tremendous for you know, the state of Nebraska.